Good afternoon. It is Sunday, February 19th, 2017. This is Jason Horak reporting on the ongoing adventures of the Dodge Daytona electric vehicle. As you may have noticed, it's been a really long time since my last update. I believe about a year and a half has gone by and I haven't made any videos or updated my blog, mostly because there hasn't really been anything to report. I've been driving the electric car nearly every day and just playing lots of video games, <laughs> working, uh, you know, working on the house projects, that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, no nothing new on the electric car that has really been worth putting to video. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, today is an unusually warm day. It's probably in the 40s right now. And um, we had gotten a ton of snow this year, uh, so I would say about two feet of snow has melted in the, in the last two days, which is pretty impressive. Um, so we're, we're we're getting there. But for February, this is a uh, you know again very unusually warm, which got me thinking about electric car projects and what I want to do next. We've also had some issues that I've just kind of been living with, but uh, now's a good time to start to fix them. So, as you may notice, my charger is not plugged into the car at the moment, and the charger buddy is all disassembled. Well, there's a story about that. Uh, last, I think it was in September, we had a little problem where I plugged in the car to charge like I do every day after work, and uh, went inside the house, came out the next morning, the car wasn't charged. More interestingly, the power was out for the whole garage, and uh, so I thought that was kind of kind of strange. And just to kind of recap how that's set up, so I have a 50, 50 amp uh, 220 volt outlet right here, standard you know dryer or electric stove kind of deal, and. This is my charge cord, which is a generator power cord, uh, 25 foot Generac, I think is the brand. Um, anyway, they're available at Lowe's for about 200 bucks. And uh, as you can see on this end, it has the twist lock connector. Again, for the 50 amp, uh, 220 volt. And that plugs into the car here into this uh, inlet port. So basically we've got, I believe it's hot, hot, and neutral, and then this is the, the ground. So it's a four-wire setup uh, that can handle up to 220 volts at 50 amps. So that works out pretty good. Um, gets a lot of, you know, insertions and removals while it's uh, powered up, so hanging out with sparks and stuff, which is, you know, just in here on these little contactors, um, which, you know, will eventually wear them out, but it's not a very expensive inlet and can be relatively easily replaced. So, works out well, <laughs> and it's pretty industry standard. You can buy them at Lowe's, Home Depot, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's nothing special. So anyway, that has a cable that runs underneath the car. It's down in the wheel well and actually is one of the problems that we've not running into. As you can see, I have a, uh, that's a PEX tubing. I don't know if I can get a good view of this. So yeah, so this is PEX, so it's plastic uh, for like water piping and stuff. And that's what I use in my house to do uh, hot water. And I encased the cable in that in order to kind of give it some protection since it was so exposed right here in the wheel well. That's the, the back of that, uh, that plug. It's all very exposed, just where the, the gas cap comes in on this particular car. So what had happened was, is that I replaced my tires with these thicker tires that came um, by default on the car, and the thicker tires actually rub against that only sometimes uh, when I go around a corner, like a sharp corner, the, the, the whole wheel moves just a little bit and causes it to rub on that, uh, on that plastic pipe, which you know, would make kind of an annoying grinding sound of plastic on rubber um, when going around corners, and it's been happening for eh, a couple of years now. 
As you can see, it's now finally gotten through the plastic and is starting to uh, wear into the rubber um, casing on the uh, on the cable itself, or the plastic casing on the cable, and so that needs to be replaced with something better um, just to prevent that from causing an electrical issue. However, it did not pierce the cable, uh, so we don't have any exposed wire or anything at this point. Um, it, so that was my initial thought, was that maybe my power went out because maybe that had gotten wet in there or something. And uh, so, anyway. So that's one thing that has to be has to be fixed, but that cable runs down underneath the car and comes up inside the, the, the middle battery box and then comes up here in this cable and ends right here. So we've got hot, hot, neutral, and ground coming from that uh, from that out, uh, inlet port on the side. Um, just while we're on it, these two wires here are the high voltage. There's a this one actually has red underneath all the electrical tape, and this one has black. And these are the positive and negative for the pack, which is the 200 volts that are sensed by the charger buddy for. Uh, the voltage sense of, you know, <laughs> what's our voltage at right now? Um, so anyway, so this this is the Charger Buddy unit here. And so I have disconnected all that so I can show you. But uh, just as a quick review, what it does is it shows on this little display what the current voltage is, as it's reading from here. And then it toggles, based on how it's programmed with the little buttons, um, it t changes two contactors, turns them on and off, which affect the hot the two hot legs of the 220. And again, this is the neutral, and this is the ground. So this outlet is plugged in through contactors <laughs> to these wires, to this port over here, and that port is plugged into this wire, which goes down into <laughs> the outlet on, on the house. Um, so the whole purpose of that is that then you have your charger plugged into this, and it this little box will turn on and off the charger, will physically unplug the hot leads from it um, whenever it hits the appropriate voltage as programmed on, on the little display. Pretty simple, but uh, anyway, so the way that this works <clears throat> is it gets its power to run the little um, meter from this little laptop power supply. This is a Dell laptop power supply that happens to put out um, about 19 volts, 19 and a half or something, um, and then this little meter happens to run somewhere between, I think it's 9 to 36 volts from the specs. Um, so this is how it actually gets, you know, the, the 19 volts in for positive and negative there at DC. Uh, so that goes down to here to one of the, to the common relay uh, point, and then the other side just goes to these two contactors, positive and negative, um, and that's what controls how these turn on. So this is the negative side, same thing. Negative goes there to the common, then it goes out from here to the negative side down here. Um, I, if you want more details on the build of this particular unit, you can check the uh, appropriate video in my history, um, where I go through intricate details of how I came up with this design and all that good stuff. But um, so an interesting side note is that because these Dell power supplies happen to be, um, and I guess most laptop power supplies, they work on 220 as well as 110, I was able to wire this just like regular, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to unplug this while holding the camera and not shaky camming it all over for you. So this is a standard uh, 110 outlet plug, but it's wired in a little bit differently in that this is where our hot lead, our black hot lead would come in from from here. And then that just goes to the, the one side here, and then the other, um, the red hot lead would come in here, again, from the 220. And so for our, our little green connector, we've got the white and the black, um, which would be the neutral, technically, if it was a 110, uh, and the black would be the, uh, the other hot, uh, vice versa. I'm not sure which one's which, 
to be honest, but it doesn't really matter. Um, but the point is that with the Dell power adapter, it's able to convert that into and, and, and run just like as if you plugged it into a, uh, a 110 outlet, if you plug it into a 220, um, like over in Europe or wherever, um, it, it can also function. So anyway, I was able to drive this power adapter to give me my 19.5 volts based on the 220 inputs uh, directly coming in from the outside. Uh, the green is just the ground, so that's just a shared ground for, for this uh, as well as for the the ground on on the plug that is just tied into this ground here. It's very very cool. Okay, um, and then just for reference, the white uh, neutral that was coming in from the 220 um, just went straight into the white neutral on this, this plug. Uh, so again, pretty simple setup. It just uh, kind of works. So. What's weird about this is we notice these big brown stains on on the top of my contactors. Um, and I, after looking into this a lot and testing this, it turns out the contactors themselves are fine. Um, they we were mounted upside down in the box because again it kind of sits like this in the car, um, but they work just fine. Uh, they properly connect and disconnect stuff, but the little wires that are connecting the contactors, so again, the, the black would come in here from the hot, again, from here, <laughs> to this, and then it would, would be bridged across to here when the contactor turns on, and then this little wire here simply connected that side to the outlet. But for some reason, this wire got really warm, and uh, I've just got these in here with hand tightened. For, I can show you, but it's just uh, it already un unhooked them. But as you can see, the wire is nice and shiny. I don't know if the camera is actually picking it up or if it's all blurry. Sometimes it's a little hard to tell on this little camera, but um, but anyway, all the contacts are nice and shiny. There's no no problem where it like was oxidized or something. It's just that this wire itself got hot enough that the it started to burn off the, um, what is it, well, I don't know, plastic wrapping um, on it, and that's what caused all this heat damage or smoke uh, inside the thing, it was just this wire getting so hot. I don't know why it got that hot, because it's a pretty thick freaking wire, and, you know, it's, it's a household electric, you know, 220, 50 amp wire, that came out of like a cord. Um, quite possibly it's the same wire as this. Uh, I may have just taken a, a chunk of that that was left over and I did it the same thing for the red. Um, and so I don't know why it got so warm. Um, my goal at this point is I'm going to replace these wires with something beefier. Um, go up in a gauge or two just to make sure that we don't have these, this heat problem again. Um, but again, so here's the red wire. You can see that it's blackened. It, it got so hot. Again, I'm not sure the camera's really doing justice to this, but uh, you put it in the sun, sunlight a little bit. Um, but yeah, so contacts, nice and shiny, good. <laughs> but the actual wire itself just got so warm that it uh, discolored the plastic. Um, so anyway, kind of strange. But I'm going to replace it with some, some heavier duty wire um, just for these little bridge contactor things, or bridge connections. And then the contactors themselves appear to be fine. I did test them independently and they seem to work, so <laughs> I think I can resurrect the Charger Buddy. But while I'm doing this, I'm going to do another little change. Uh, since I have to replace that cable that's coming in from the outside anyway, and uh, you know, just reroute it differently so it won't rub on the damn tire. <laughs> I'm also going to go ahead and make a change to the Charger Buddy itself in that I want to put a plug on it. So this is just a new 50 amp, uh, really heavy duty, uh, thick and burly cord. Uh, so this is a dryer or electric stove extension cord. It's a six footer, 25 bucks from Lowe's. 
with our four pair of wire. And so what I'm going to do is instead of having you know, these hardwired in to the charger buddy, I'm going to just have it have its, its own plug um, with these guys instead. And that way I can reposition this unit. I can take it in and out of the car without actually having to, um, you know, unscrew the whole thing and take it apart. I can just unplug it and pull it out. Um, it does add an extra connection in the car, but I think it'll make that versatility will make it more, you know, worthwhile. Um, you know, just having this connection all plugged into the charger buddy. So, in order to make that work, I'm going to have to add an outlet. So I have this new outlet box that's the same same setup as the other, but this is going to be hooked directly into the wire coming in from the outside. So the idea is that I will have essentially a 220 outlet inside the car, you know, that's uh, protected from the elements and so forth that the Charger Buddy plug <laughs> can plug into or I can plug the charger into directly because the charger has this same type of plug. Um, so anyway, that'll be, that'll be kind of useful, I think. Uh, just if I need to bypass the whole Charger Buddy unit, I can still charge with plugging the cable, you know, the extension cable here into the wall and then into the outside port. Um, so anyway, that's kind of the goal. It's uh, <laughs> not a huge project. Whatever, it uh, is what it is, but uh, I just uh, wanted to give everyone an update before I started tearing into this anymore, because um, the next step is I'm going to have to actually take and rip this port out, change the cable, change the way the cable's routed into the car, um, and install this and install this guy uh, on the new cable, wherever it's going to end up. I haven't decided whether I'm going to have it down here. And one option is I could put it right into this space here, which is kind of out of the way. And then when the cable from the charger or whatever is plugged into it, it'll actually be below this um, wooden piece and completely out of the way. So that might be a good spot for it. Um, alternatively, it could go inside the middle battery box, um, essentially where this cable is coming from. It would just be in, in there. And then you just plug the charger into the inside of that box um, instead. So anyway, got some options, things to look into. But uh, overall, I'm just trying to make a better, better solution for this. Um, yeah. Otherwise, again, it's been about a year and a half <laughs> since my last update. I put an additional t uh, 2,500 miles on the car, and uh, I've been driving it all winter long as per normal. Uh, mostly because my gas car, which was intended to be driven during the winter, is in the shop and has been for the last month or two. So, fun, fun, fun!